Hey guys, today Darren and I are pouring a concrete entry slab. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right guys, so today we got a six by 16 inch entry slab we're pouring to this building. They're remodeling this building into like a bagel shop, coffee shop type thing. So they just want some concrete here for the entrance and then from the entry slab out to the road, they'll end up paving the rest of that. Now Darren and I, we were just hired to come in here and pour and finish the concrete. The guy we're working for, actually we're working for the excavator here, he actually put the forms up put the styrofoam put the wire in it uh, because we've been so busy that we just couldn't get here and do the forming part of it so in order for us to get here on this day and get it poured he had to have it all ready for us so that's that's why we're here and we're going to do a broom finish on this we'll give it you know give it some traction so nobody's going to slip getting into the building we actually live in maine so we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles from november to march and that's why they put two inches of styrofoam under a lot of the slabs here in Maine and the, the styrofoam helps insulate the ground so the frost the ground doesn't freeze underneath the slab and heave it and we definitely wouldn't want that although this does have probably two or three feet of really good gravel under here it's probably not going to heave anyway it's just good insurance put the styrofoam down and then they're not going to have to worry about it you can see we're button up against some old concrete there with this building that had kind of a jagged edge. They didn't want to remove that piece, so they're going to caulk that after. So in between this new slab and the old slab, we got some foam there. It's called ISO strip off. So it's just a half inch piece of foam. And the top part of that, the top half inch of that, well, you can strip that right off, peel it out afterwards. And then you can fill that in with a nice caulking so no water will get down in between the two. We're using a 4,000 PSI concrete. All the exterior concrete we pour in Maine is 4,000 PSI. It's just a little bit more durable. It holds up better in the winters. It's got uh, microfiber in it too. It's got some air entrainment in it to help with the freeze and thaw cycles. And a little bit of mid-range water reducer. We're probably pouring, I don't know, that's probably around a five inch slump. So. For us, that's a little bit stiffer than we normally pull, but for some outside stuff like this, this has a little bit of slope away from the building. Um, we we pour, tend to pour just a little bit stiffer than some of our normal pours. This concrete was really good and creamy to it. You could feel it as we was magging the, the edges. Uh, it had a really good pace to it. And it was setting up pretty good too, which is what we wanted because they're calling for rain in the afternoon. This is about 9 in the morning. We've already done one pour today, uh, concrete floor, and then we left one guy there to power trial that. So this is actually the second pour of the day. And they're calling for showers in about 5 or 6 hours. So we put a little bit of accelerator in it so we could get a good broom finish on it and it would be good and firm enough just in case the GC needed to cover it with some poly afterwards. You can see Dan and I got it a little bit high there, but we actually, as we're screeding like this and we're not stopping, we, we actually like it a little bit higher than definitely low. We don't want to have to stop and start. So if we do have to stop for anything, it's to pull it back a little bit, kind of like what Darren's doing right now. It just helps fill in, especially when you pull your boot out of the out from under you like that and you're walking backwards. If it's a little bit high, it just kind of helps you fill that in where your boots are. This has an inch slope from the building out to that outside board, which in, this, in six feet, an inch is going to be plenty enough just to help shed the water. We do. We tend to do a lot of these little like entry slabs or patio slabs uh, in a year. It's just um, it's what most people do to their entrances up here in Maine. Whether it's for a, a retail place like this, whether it's for like a gas station or a school or 
even even a house or even in front of a garage a residential garage you know the, that would be called we usually call that an apron but it's basically the same thing and there's not a ton you know what's kind of weird in Maine is there's not a ton of concrete driveways up here where in a lot of other states that have winters similar to ours there's a lot of concrete driveways just for some reason people in Maine they're not big on concrete driveways but they are big on like aprons like this or entryways or patios <laughs> so most of the driveways done here in Maine are actually just asphalt driveways um, there's a lot of salt they use in the winter up here on the roads, so the salt can really eat into the concrete now what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm gonna put a contraction joint right there 16 feet you know I, I just didn't dare not put any cut in this at all it probably would shrink and get a little shrinkage crack somewhere so we didn't we're not putting this in the exact center we're, we're offsetting it a little bit to keep it on one edge of the door but it's pretty close to center and that's what the GC wanted right there he showed us right where to put it so I'm just getting it cut in early Kind of using that walk behind Groover joiner to just get it cut in. And that'll save us, you know, save us a little bit of time from waiting for the concrete to set up enough to get on it, to cut it in by hand. This is one thing, you know, we didn't we didn't have these type of tools way back when I first started this in the 80s. We would have to wait for the concrete to firm up enough so you could get on it, you know, either balance on that screed I got down there on your hands and knees and cut it in by hand or get on it with some styrofoam and then cut it in by hand afterwards but nowadays you got all these really cool tools you can get them joints cut in really early I do like to wait for the concrete to firm up just a little bit before I do my edging though like I'm doing right now like I don't like to cut my edges in right after I get done bull floating and that's just a matter of preference I think in, in its experience so you know depending on how much edging you have to do and how fast the concrete's setting up that's going to kind of dictate when you start edging so I know it's only literally only going to take me about 60 seconds to get these edges cut in so I can let it firm up a little bit the reason I like to let it firm up is I th just think it holds its shape a little bit better doesn't tend to sag at all and then right after you get done edging it, you can go right back over it and mag float out your, your edger marks and just leave the curved edge for now. Another thing we, we don't typically do in Maine on exterior concrete is steel trowel it when it's outside like this. Steel troweling the concrete tends to close up the surface. And when you got air entrainment in the concrete, you know, some of that air, you're working that air out right now. Um, and that's just the normal case when you when you mag float any surface or steel trowel it you're always going to work a little bit of that air out the surface so if you steel trowel it if you close that surface up sometimes the air will get trapped under there cause a blister or a bubble and even though you're broom finishing it it still can get trapped under there and it just ends up popping off later so if we mag float it like we're doing now and we mag float it once let it set up for a little bit and then mag float it again really tight the mag float tends to keep the surface open a little bit better and doesn't trap any air under it. And then we can broom right over it. And we can still get a really nice fine broom finish. Depending on how fine we want the broom finish will just depend on how firm we let the concrete set up when we do that second mag floating, that's all. Same with doing a Fresno up here. We don't typically use a Fresno after we bull float because, again, the Fresno is going to close up the surface and it tends to trap the air entrainment under the surface which just leads to problems down the road is what we found so we're getting you can see how nice that's brooming we like to broom you know right after that guy gets done magging while the paste is still kind of moist we like to get the broom right on it if you let the, if you let it you know set up for a little bit in between magging and brooming then you're going to start dragging these these dry little uh, concrete balls across the surface and they do flake off the next day but it just looks better initially like right now it looks better 
if you don't have all those little balls on the surface. And I'm just touching up a few marks there. Sometimes you'll pull a little tiny piece of aggregate with the broom and it may look like it leaves a little bit of a line in there. So you can just go right back over it with the edge of the broom, touch that up and it makes it disappear. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments if you think this broom finish looks good. Also, we didn't leave any picture frame marks on this because it's kind of an industrial type look building. So we're not going to picture frame it. We're not going to recut the groove back out. We're just going to leave it looking like this. I mean, let me know down in the comments if that's what you would do too or if you would picture frame this. Oh yeah, that does it. 6 by 16, 6 inches thick, broom finish. Hello. Looks pretty good. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.